Tonight, the return of the Mars hoax. NASA is testing an alternate astronaut launch escape system for Orion. A New York couple set to be the first wed in zero G, LRO, L Cross, and of course the groundbreaking ceremonies of Spaceport America. All that and a whole lot more on this LRO terrific edition of Space Vidcast Live for June 19, 2009. Welcome to Space Vidcast Live. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is beautiful, lovely, wonderful, talented, and incredibly awesome, <laughs> Carrie Ann Higginbotham. You like that? <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm, glad, <laughs> I'm glad you like that. Jeez. Wow. You know, speaking of, if I... <laughs> you going to make it? <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> I, I'll just run the entire show myself today. We had an action-packed adventure show. You know, NASA's tried to launch STS-127 twice now. We've been up. You can take a moment if you need to. You just keep, I'll let you know what I'm <laughs> All right. And uh, uh, they've had a really hard time uh, launching 127. It's still on the ground. And, you know, we were kind of starting to get disappointed, and they've got the LRO L-Cross launch today. And the weather rolled in and we thought, oh no, this is going to be the third time they've tried to launch something in like one week and it didn't go up. Alas, it did launch and we've got some footage. Check it out. Stable at step three. T minus 30 seconds. And valve locked. 25. Status check. Go, Alice. Go Centaur. 20. 15. T minus 15 seconds, standing by for terminal count. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Main engine ignition and liftoff of the Atlas V rocket with LRO Elcross. America's first step in a lasting return to the moon. And we have the picture program in. Take a look good. RD 180 is operating well. Pump speeds are stable. Air compressions look good. Bus and battery voltage is are stable. Tank pressures look good. RD-180 is continuing to operate well. So that that's part of the launch. Mm -hmm. uh, you better now? I think he played the video so I could catch my breath. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, you can watch the entire launch. We've uploaded that to YouTube in high definition without the graphics at the bottom so you can see the full launch. Mm -hmm. And you can go to spacevidcast.com. We'll post the video right there yep. in, in full high definition for you. It's going to be awesome. And you can see it from beautiful <clears throat> right about when the video started, which was T minus uh, one minute or so, yeah. all the way up through Miko. Not just uh, yeah. uh, Seiko, but all the way up through Miko. So um, that's going to be awesome. Or First and Fika, whatever the whatever it is. Miko, it's, like, it's fifteen minutes. It's Gico, 15. Chico. It is, it is it's Giko. It's Giko. Giko, absolutely. Right. Works for me. So <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people have been asking what is LRO and L cross, the lunar reconnaissance all that other fun jazz. Yes. And you know, we could explain it. You want to take thirty seconds and explain it or do you want to throw roll a video and explain it instead? I, I don't know if I would. The thing is that I don't know if I would be able to explain it as well as the video is here's, the here's issue. The thing. So this is a NASA produced video. Yes. Um, as such, it's painfully boring. This is true, but it, it does a really good job of explaining. What happens is that we're looking for water on the moon. We're not sure if, there, if it's there or not, and pretty much we decided the best way to figure this out is to blow a gigantic hole in the moon and then look at the dust. Did we ask the moon if we could blow a hole in it? We did, you know, we didn't. We never, I never asked the moon 
check the Space Vidcast archives. So we'll roll this NASA video for you guys. A little bit boring, it's about three minutes or so, but it's great information. And if you've got a friend who's like, well, why the heck are we going back to the moon? Why are we sending up these? Just got him to this episode and you're good to go. So here's, here's that video. Well, LRO begins its mission with the separation from LCROSS. The LRO objective is to provide the most comprehensive data sets and maps of the moon in preparation for human return. LRO has a suite of seven instruments that will be used to identify safe and interesting landing sites, lunar resources, and provide vital information about the lunar environment as well as a wealth of scientific information. About five days after launch, LRO will perform a lunar orbit insertion maneuver, beginning a 60-day period of commissioning. During this time, LRO will perform instrument checkouts and calibrations and will begin providing target data to its sister spacecraft, LCROSS. After commissioning, LRO will begin its prime mission using the LROC cameras to provide high resolution images and maps, the LOLA altimeter to provide topographic maps, Diviner to provide information about the thermal environment, Crater to provide information about the radiation environment, Mini RF to provide radar imagery, and LAMP to image the moon in the ultraviolet spectrum. LCROSS's primary objective is to explore the possible presence of water ice in the lunar surface using the spent Centaur upper stage as an impactor. As LRO is heading to the moon, so is LCROSS. But instead of going into orbit around the moon, LCROSS performs a lunar flyby to change its trajectory, putting it into a near polar orbit around Earth. We do this so that when we, ret when we return for impact in October of this year, we approach the impact target at a very steep angle to maximize the impact energy to excavate as much material as possible and to time the event for optimal lighting and observability conditions. About nine hours from final approach, LCROSS separates from the Centaur, leaving, lo uh, leaving lunar gravity to pull it in. LCROSS then makes a 180 degree rotation to point its suite of instruments uh, uh, toward the impact site. It performs a short burn to slow itself down to follow four minutes behind the Centaur. As the Centaur impacts the surface at about 5,600 miles an hour, about 350 metric tons of material are excavated, kicking the regolith out of the crater floor and into the sunlight. Following four minutes behind, LCROSS uses its suite of nine cameras, spectrometers, and sensors to search for a definitive answer to the question of whether there is water on the moon. LCROSS le relays its data directly back to Earth uh, in real time. There is no onboard storage since four minutes later LCROSS itself impacts the surface creating a second plume. After the impact, LRO will observe the new craters of the Centaur and LCROSS gathering additional information about the geological makeup of the lunar surface. LRO continues its exploration mission for a year uh, uh, past uh, commissioning and then will become a scientific mission under NASA's Science Mission Directorate. These missions together are the first of NASA's Exploration Systems Missions Directorate providing uh, important information toward the planning and implementation uh, for a human return to the moon. <laughs> I think Ben fell asleep. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Everyone be very, very sorry. quiet. Wow, that was a uh, whew, action-packed video. Thanks, NASA. I think, I'm not sure we should have, you know, I'm going to take a quick aside here. Okay. You know, we get sh some, we get quite a bit of schlack. <laughs> is this like Jerry's Corner? This is Benny's Corner. <laughs> Benny's, Benny's Corner. Corner. We get quite a bit of schlack off of YouTube and even on our own website for mm. not taking this serious enough and not being blah, blah, blah. And, you know, uh, you're right, and we're not going to. Um, <laughs> We like to have fun with this. That's what we are. That's our niche. That's our genre. We like to laugh and enjoy and giggle throughout the entire episode. It's what makes us us. It's, it's, it's our attitude and our ambiance. And I found that uh, the space community has a couple things that are interesting. One is it's a big ex exclusive club, and we're not part of that exclusive club, but that's okay. Right. Um, and for some reason, and, and forgive my language, but it also seems to have a giant stick up its butt. And uh, it does. I don't know why, but everyone's like, you have to take this seriously. You have to be more serious. Blah, 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 blah. Screw well, that. I, mean, I think what part of the issue is that. <laughs> Nothing says funny like space exploration. There, <laughs> there is a lot of stuff out there that is very serious. And uh, it, it kind of like that video, it's sort of boring. 
you know, if you really do get down into the nitty gritty, all of the details, and there's plenty of people who do that. So we didn't feel the need to just be another one of those people. And we're not. And so, you know, we, we got, we even got this during our LOL, uh, the LRO, L cross oh, stuff, you know, it was like, well, can you do this type of thing? Or can you do a standard def feed? You, no, no. You know what? We're going to do a high def feed. We're going to push the boundaries of what the technology can do, and we're going to have fun doing it. And if you want to see standard def feed, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Some people want the serious, you know, like CNN broadcast, suit right. and tie type thing. Right. And that's perfectly fine. Absolutely okay. That's not us. So you're going to need to go somewhere else. You've got plenty of outlets for that. And we, w I would love to have you come in here and have fun with us. And if you want the more serious stuff, head on over to the more serious outlets. Enjoy your time there. But there's no reason that everyone needs to be so serious all the time. Lighten the frack up, people. So anyhow, uh, that's just my, I'm going to get off my soapbox for a moment there. We're not going to, we're not going to change. We like the show. We'll work with you as a community, and you know, if, if there are things that we want to change in the show or tweak a little bit, certainly. But generally, we're going to have fun. We're going to be light. We're going to laugh. That's just. And we're going to make fun of NASA Edge. And we're going to make fun of NASA Edge a lot, <laughs> a lot. You know, I should. You know, what? next show, next show, we should just show up in like a suit and tie, and you should wear like a little business suit. <laughs> Oh man! All right, um, where are we going from here? We did so that was L R O L cross. I apologize for you know we should have done that right before the break because that was I swear to you the most boring video I've ever seen produced. I we should you know what we should talk like that for the rest of the show. <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> I just don't think it's possible for me to do it. So speaking of, all right, um, the return of the Mars hoax. We touched on this a little bit last week. Yes, we but did. But this time, I decided yes. to come up with a giant graphic. Check out our giant moon Mars graphic. This is awesome. Awesome. Yep. There you go. They're saying that when you look up in the sky, that it's going to look like this. This is what you'll see. You're going to see a giant Mars as big as the moon in the sky. Hmm. No. No. If you ever see that hoax, Slap the person that forwarded it to you and tell them never, ever, ever send me something this silly again. Yes, exactly. The co-host got a question about it from a viewer exactly. today. Exactly. I've been getting questions about it from family and friends. You know what? No, this is, yeah, exactly. Where's the fail step? No, it's not going to happen. It, yeah, I know. Like how Mars is in front of the moon. Well, come on. It goes to the, it goes to the hoax, it's, right? Yeah, it's just as logical as that the Mars will look as big as the moon. So. Uh. It doesn't make any sense. So I'll leave it at that. If you get an email or something that says, the you're, when you look up and on whatever And this is the only day, time, you, you know, and the and other thing is that there's there's like a timeline on it. Like, this is the only time you'll be able to see it in the next 6,000 years. <laughs> We're so lucky to be alive. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Not at all. It, my email told me it's true. Good try, yeah. though. And, and, you know, I've actually had, like, intelligent people ask me about it. I just, you know, people don't. I don't think people understand how amazingly far away <laughs> Mars is. So, <laughs> the king of Nigeria told me it was real. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, NASA is going to begin testing an alternate launch escape system for astronauts on the Orion. It's for the Constellation program, but it sits atop Orion. Mm -hmm. This alternate astronaut launch abort system is called L Max Launch Abort System. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Max Launch Abort System, or as I wrote, lunch, apparently. <laughs> and <laughs> Come on, you guys do that a lot, right? Lunch instead of launch? Lunch instead of launch. Yeah. I do it all the time. I, I don't know bad. what it is, but I always end up writing Mlass. lunch. And MLAS is basically, <laughs> it's a, is it, uh, uh, it's coming up, I believe they moved back the test date to the 22nd of this month, and I apologize, okay. I don't think it's in the calendar. But basically, it's a, um, um, an alternate launch escape system. And what this is, is when you launch the Ares rocket with Constellation on top, in case something goes critically, critically bad mm -hmm. with the, um, the rocket, they can, they can rip Orion away really, really fast, just pull it away. Uh, from the vehicle as fast as possible and like a mile away so mm -hmm. that as the rocket's exploding, the crew is safe given they're pulling 10 Gs, so it's it's safe, but it's <laughs> they're like... They're safe. <laughs> no, no, no. Safe-ish. Yeah, they're, they're safe, but it's, it's you know, a, a good pull. Well, this alternate launch uh, abort system, instead of using a single solid rocket at the top, this one uses four, I believe. Uh, let me see right, And here. the co-host is saying that the vehicle hasn't been approved yet. Yeah, yeah that's correct. This is simply just a test. They're, this right. is, they're not, this is not, 
by any means replacing anything, nothing's going on, but they're kind of running both of these programs in conjunction with each other is my understanding, okay. just to make sure that everything's absolutely safe. Well, and you know, I like that idea that, you know, that they are putting in one more, because God forbid, you know what I mean? Like, that something happens on the launch. I mean, that would just suck hardcore. So it's, it's nice that they're at least thinking about it and they, that they are trying to test something out. Yeah, now this has, and the neat thing is, so the, origi the, the launch abort system they've got now has a single solid rocket motor mm -hmm. on top, it just does its thing, and there's some videos of that. This has four or more to really, really get it out of the to way. To really, really get it out of the way. So that's coming up moderately soon on the 22nd. I know it got pushed back. Okay. Uh, so it, it's cool. If that's going to be at the, uh, I think that's at the Wallops Flight Facility. Uh, I think something like that. I don't know. I'm sure it's the somewhere out there. NASA Edge host or co-host will uh, will let us know yeah, about and that. Yeah, is saying this, the hard part isn't getting isn't pulling the capsule away. It's getting it off course from the problem, which actually kind of goes to getting it away because you have to get it away in any direction fast and far enough away that any explosion that may, could be going on in right. any direction, because you don't know. Because all that shrapnel. I mean, you, that's a huge rocket. The, the capsule's only like so big when compared to the entire rest yeah. of capsule, the rocket. Capsule, right. rocket. So when all of that blows up, you <laughs> want to be over here. Yep, way, way far away. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, you, well, yeah, you do, you do need some basic stuff and you need some computer, but you also need some pretty powerful rockets on board that aren't going to interfere with the actual launching of the vehicle should everything go okay. Right, that's a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff going on. It needs to be powerful, it needs to be fast, it needs to be lightweight, it needs to be aerodynamic-ish. I mean, lots of things going on. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, that's happening moderately soon. And for those of you who wanted to get wet in zero G and wanted to be first, okay, and Jeff is going to go, and it's not instant, and that's right, there's, there's reaction time. But for those of you, moving on, for those of you who wanted to be wed first in zero G, a New York couple is beating you to it, and they have to have a special zero G wedding. Okay, they didn't have to have. They wanted to have a special zero G wedding thing. Yeah, they didn't have to have the special zero G uh, wedding outfits. Yeah. Okay, because that is ridiculous. It just it, it it's it's just uh, spit it out, woman. I can't. That that's how bad it is. But but they do. I don't know if you've got the picture or not. There oh, you yeah. go. Okay. So this is this is the thing that I don't understand about this. Okay, it's a gorgeous wedding dress, as far as I'm concerned. Look how happy he is. Well, and he's got to wear one like... too. They're both wearing <laughs> the dress. Um, no, <laughs> no, the, the thing is that in my mind, right, it's zero G, right? So theoretically, stuff can kind of go floating all over the place. All up on? So the last thing I want to do is have this great big old skirt that can fly back up in my face and I'm flashing my entire wedding party now on my wedding. In, you, did you see what I'm saying? Yes. It would seem to me I would wear a pantsuit. It'd probably be wha white. Well, that's probably why it's a special, a special dress. Is it, is it weighted? Maybe. It doesn't well, no. Velcro I mean, to her really legs? Make, that wouldn't really make sense, yeah. now, would it? Okay. Well, no, no it's got it all this stuff on it. it looks like it's just going to go. No, maybe it does. Maybe it has like Velcro and things to keep it down, like wires and things to, to keep it its shape. We don't know. We don't know. Look at that. Look how happy they are. They are so happy. They're getting, they're getting wet in zero G, but they're cheating. So for, for those of you who actually want to be wet in space. Space. They're not in space. They're just going on a parabolic flight. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of mm -hmm. like faux zero G, right? It's, it's, it's simulated zero G. So I'm not sure that this actually counts. You guys are laughing at me for saying weights. I know, it's been a long day, all right? I'm sorry. <laughs> are they really, are they really? <laughs> yeah, they're was, like, really, weights, zero G? <laughs> I was hoping they'd gloss over that. <laughs> no, it's me. I'm the one who says stupid stuff and y'all know it, all right? So don't even. It's, it's been a long day. Uh, yeah, you know. It's been a long week. You have seen them when they work, when they move like 10 ton things with like one finger in space, right? No. Okay, no? No. Right, just check them. Never. Check them. I, don't, I don't watch NASA TV. When, <laughs> that's because it's like... <laughs> and then children's programming. Anywho. And then NASA Edge comes on and we're all like, click. All right. <gasps> uh, <laughs> I'm not. So hateful. I'm so hateful tonight, I know. aren't I? I adore Blair You know why? And Chris. You know why? Because they haven't stepped up to the Moon Pie Challenge yet. This is true. They're trying to move on to the Chipotle Challenge, but they haven't even completed the Moon Pie Challenge. I don't think they're allowed to actually move on until they complete the Moon Pie Challenge. When we come back, groundbreaking ceremonies for Spaceport America. The most awesomest thing ever is getting more awesomer. Right. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome to the Crow River Coffee Company in Watertown, Minnesota. Situated on the bank of the beautiful Crow River, we offer espresso drinks, delicious food, live music, bulk beans, and artisan items. You can see us at crowrivercoffee.com. Thanks! Oh, wait. Oh, hey. Oh, sorry. Hi. Woo! That's awesome music. How you doing? Woohoo! All right. Beep. Good. <laughs> wah, wah, <bow. laughs> uh, you know, uh, a lot of people were booing and hissing during the break for STS 127. Do you know why they were booing and hissing? Um, because 127... Scrubbed twice in the middle of the night. These people were not smart people. Do you know why they were not smart people? Why? They did not buy. Crow River Coffee's Blast Off Blend, which oh, would have kept yeah. them up nice and awake kept us during up. those scrub attempts. And Blast Off Blend is this month's Coffee of the Month. Yay. And you can get it at www.crowrivercoffee.com. And I happen to hear from Crow River Coffee that you're all a bunch of cheap bastards and oh. you haven't bought enough coffee yet. <laughs> I mean, it's my show. I can say what I want, right? Apparently. <laughs> well, then. So seriously, CrowRiverCoffee.com, Blast Off Blend, get some coffee, something, something, enough said, don't make me pull the show over. All right. <laughs> Went back about a year ago? No, over a year ago. When we were, when was uh, Northrop Grumman Lunar, Lunar Not Lunar quite Channel? a year ago. Not we were there in uh, October or November I don't remember. of last year. Last year, all right, 2008. Mm -hmm. We, there was the big announcement of Spaceport America going in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much awesome, but mm -hmm. there was nothing there yet, right? It was just kind of a plan. Great big old open field with a sign saying, Spaceport America. <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> New home of. The funny thing is that it was kind of like that 50s retro of like, coming soon, Spaceport America. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, yep. it was nice and bright and sunny. And then you look out and just see dirt for miles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, well, yeah, that's kind of, that is New Mexico though, right? <laughs> yeah. dirt, dirt for, for miles, miles, mountains in the background. Yeah, white sands. And that's yeah. it. In white sands, yeah. absolutely. Anyway. And Virgin Galactic made the announcement that that is going to be their U.S. home of operations. Yes. And Virgin, uh, Virgin, uh, Spaceport America came out with a bunch of different, uh, neat different things. Mm -hmm. And as of today. Today. Is groundbreaking. Yep. For Spaceport America. They oh. are going to begin building, uh, well it's not actually our first spaceport, but it's, uh, I guess it's our first consumer spaceport. Right. Right, where you like can take private spaceport. private spaceport for Virgin Galactic, X-Core, Armadillo Aerospace, where you'll be able to go and actually fly into space. I and mean, look at that thing. It's it's interesting looking. <laughs> All right, there's some people who yeah, okay. have some thoughts about that. It's it's a little... Uh, uh, you know what? It's, it's space age in high tech. Uh, space tech. It's a little George O'Keefe, but you know, besides that, it's all good. Um, but <laughs> okay, that's enough of that picture. So, um, <laughs> but 
It's uh, cool that we're getting one. Gizmodo's on the right track. That's not quite what we think, See, but Ryland I can't. See, Rylan said, like a manta ray. Exactly. Like a manta ray. Okay, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll just drop that part of it. <laughs> and, um, but, the, but the neat thing is, so we were there and we were asking, why New Mexico? Right. And because seriously, it's like in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of hard to get to. Why would you build a spaceport in New Mexico? In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. And there were a bunch of really good reasons that were brought up. Brilliant reasons. Reasons I never in a million years would have come up in my own head. For example, the weather is pretty much the same all year round. It's yep. mild with hardly any storms. Dry. Dry. And that was interesting too. It was dry and so it's non-corrosive for the vehicle. Yup. Pretty awesome. Brilliant. Didn't think of that. I didn't, you know, I don't normally lay awake at night thinking to myself, where would I want to build a spaceport? Right. Yeah. But, you know, they did. I mean, someone sat there thinking about this stuff and they decided New Mexico was the place to go. And uh, uh, non-corrosive, uh, Similar weather all year round, and mm -hmm. it's built next to the White Sands um, oh, yeah. missile missile range. Yep. And so they get the. My understanding is they get to share some of the restricted airspace with the. Uh, yes, they can kind of. Yeah. 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 We already have the restricted airspace cleared off for us, or for them at least, and so then yeah. For us, hey, no, we're not allowed no. to talk about space cast rocket. Yet. I'm sorry. No, I'm no, sorry. that's still confidential. I can't I can't be talking about that to. yet. We'll just edit that out. Just, okay. We just didn't bleep say it up. Boop. Actually, you know what we have? Hang on, I'm just gonna piss everyone off. Check this out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyhow. So yeah, it's 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 flat. It's clean. It's dry. Uh, it's right by the restricted airspace. And it is the beginning of privatized space travel for mere mortals to go into space. This is one of those exciting things that we were talking about in 2009. I'm getting passionate. Oh my gosh, I can feel it coming on. This is the beginning of where everything changes. I was actually talking about this in the office. Yep. 2009 and 2010 are the foundation years for everything. You're not going to yep. see a whole lot, but they're the years where we build up the infrastructure and get the, the permits and the all the weird back-end stuff worked out. Mm -hmm. The foundation of the house, as it were, and then from 2011 and on, that's when we start building the structures. Yep. 2010 is when we stop the space shuttle program. It's when we get Virgin Galactic flying. It's when we get Spaceport America going. It is going to be an amazing... No, no, I, no. there's nothing wrong with the space shuttle. I'm just saying it's time to move on. No. Be it the Ares rocket, direct, I don't care, but it's time to move to a vehicle that can go back to the moon. Yes. That's what NASA should be working on, the moon and Mars, this low Earth orbit thing. I'm done with that. That's all I've known. The only thing NASA's done in my entire life is low Earth orbit. orbit. I'm sick of that. Let's go back to the moon and on to Mars. And they're in 2010, that's the moment in time, well, they've been working on it for a while, right? Right. But that's really the, one of the definitive moments where you go, no more shuttle, you got to do something. Right. And that, of course, will probably change from here to there. But for right now, it's still 2010. Exactly. You know, no, I'm, I'm trying not to step onto the soapbox. Are you trying? I'm tr really? Because they're pushing it off the stage <laughs> for you. Uh, as far as I know, there is no legal caffeine limit in Minnesota. And uh, if the co-host and or the NASA Edge host did actually break our bubble rocket that we sent you, then you owe me 500 bucks. I'm just saying. D they broke our bubble rocket? They're saying, they're like, oops, it fell off the table. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. I see how it is. And you wonder why we make fun of you. Exactly. Mm. So anyhow, uh, th this is ex I'm excited for Spaceport America. You can actually watch the groundbreaking ceremonies live starting Friday in, in the U.S. For, well, I suppose actually it's Friday everywhere, Universal Time, um, at uh, 11 o'clock Mountain Time. That's 12 o'clock Central Time, mm -hmm. 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. What's that? 5 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time. Mm, okay. So 5 o'clock UTC, you can actually go to uh, uh, spaceportamerica.com and they've got a Ustream channel there. We'll see if we can't uh, uh, broadcast a little bit of that on Space Feedcast as well. Just yoink and, and go for that. And I certainly check that out. It's going to be cool. You're watching, in my humble but accurate opinion, history be made. <laughs> You like that? I do like that. Yeah. Like Humble but better. accurate. Uh, no, seriously, we're, we're building history right here. This is, this is you're watching the your own ability to go into space. Uh, given it's two hundred thousand dollars right now, but that price is going to come down cool. fast. It's very cool. Governor Governor Richardson. Yeah, is he still doing it, or did he did he accept that position with Obama? I don't no. remember. Okay, so he's there. Uh, 
actually, if you follow Jeff Faust on Twitter, uh, he was tweeting a whole lot of stuff from there because he was there for the all the hoopla and ceremonies and stuff like that. Um, so he's got a lot of really great information on his Twitter stream. Uh, and he also has a couple of twit pics from where he was, and you can see all of that stuff. Um, where is I going with this? I have no idea. Oh, I no, 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 no. Okay, so the other really good idea, the other reason for New Mexico is because the New Mexico government, thank you, Paco De Niro, that's what reminded me, uh, the state actually gives benefits to space companies when they... Mm. Are when they base themselves in New Mexico, yep. which means Space Waycast is on its way, as far New as I'm Mexico. concerned. Awesome. <laughs> We're gonna need. Here's what we need: SPF 25,000 and lots of bottled water. Yeah, I don't. I don't stay this white this accidentally. Is, I mean, this is. This is. I have to work at this. This is amazing. Just saying. Space vod. Oh, really? Space vodcast, really? really? Oh man. On really? that note. <laughs> oh, on that note, uh, you know, certainly, guys, join us for the groundbreaking at Spaceport America. Hit the Spaceport Spaceport America website, yep. uh, spaceportamerica.com. Go to spacevidcast.com. We'll see what we can what we can stream and broadcast. It's going to be awesomely cool. And check us out every week, every Friday, two o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. Shuttle, no shuttle, mission, no mission. It was a pretty active day. You know, we had LROL Cross go up today. We broadcast that in high definition, then we s transitioned right into our show. And they window at uh, 512 Eastern Time, but then they had another one at 522, and they had another one at 532, and they ended up going at 532 because there were some storms, which was very reminiscent of the STS-127 hold, 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 yeah. uh, because of the lightning and, and stuff like that, so it was a little oh. scary there for a while. I but that shot. Anyway. We've, got, we've got a really cool shot of lightning. Very cool shot. On my Flickr feed, if you go to flickr.com slash Benjamin Higginbotham, and no, I won't spell it for you, uh, there's actually a, uh, um, a space shuttle section. We, I extracted the segments of the video that had the lightning bolt, and you can actually see the progression of the lightning bolt Very behind cool. the pad. It's really pretty, actually. You know, you guys are asking, what's the picture behind us? This is a live feed from NASA TV, mm -hmm. and I know it's very hard to tell, but what's going on is that's the picture of the orbiter. That's 127, but they don't have the... They don't yeah. have the lights on 127. Right. So this is the rotating so they just service the structure right. right over here. Exactly. And then they were like, you know what? Eh, we don't want to pay that bill for the lights. Just turn it off. We're not launching anyhow. Apparently. <laughs> Which is funny because then they still have the camera situated on it. So I'm not really <laughs> sure what's going on with that. But uh, yeah, so no, 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 that, that's what that is. And uh, don't blame us, blame NASA. I'm just saying. The yeah, shuttle, just... not the orbiter. Isn't it the orbiter with the whole thing? Isn't it the shuttle when it's not the, or is it vice versa? No, the orbiter is just the vehicle with the wings. The shuttle is the entire stack. Ah, sorry, it's shuttle. It's the orbiter shuttle. with the thing. Shuttle, 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 shuttle. Got it, shuttle. <laughs> On that note, join us next week, next Friday, 2 o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. For those lame people that can't do time zone conversions in the United States, that's Thursday nights at 7 o'clock Pacific Time, 9 o'clock Central Time, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Okay, for the three people in Mountain Time, it's 8 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time. I get, I get yelled at once in a while from like some guy in like a, on a mountain herding sheep. Like, what time is it Mountain Time? 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock Mountain Time. Hey, at least they watch. <laughs> exactly. How they watch, I don't know. I Maybe don't on know. an iPhone. You, they go to a different time zone. <laughs> <laughs> they go where technology is. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. And everyone watching live, stay with us. Post show is up next. <laughs>